Good morning, everyone. My name is John Paul. Today is October 21st. Today's webinar will focus on price action, teach you a little bit about ATR and trading the open. But before I begin, I just want to focus your attention here on the risks of trading. Remember, trading is risky. Please do not trade with funds you cannot afford to lose. If you have any questions, please contact your broker. Or if you have any questions on the risks of trading, you can always email me at support at daytradetowin.com. All right, let's begin. Remember, all of the products, all of the courses, all the educational tools, as well as the dates for the upcoming classes are available on the Day Trade to Win website. Sound check. Let me know if everyone could hear me and could see my chart. Today we're going to talk about the opening of the day and how important it is and why I think it's really the best part of the day to trade. Now if you've seen some of the videos that I have, some webinars if you've attended in the past, you know that for me it's more important to understand what the price action is doing and really how to understand if it's really worth trading or not. So what I want you to do is take a look at when the best times to trade exist in any market, whether it's the E-mini as you have it here or any other market, and then see if there's an opportunity to take advantage of the higher volatility. Now higher volatility is also risky. So remember that slow environments mean the market is slower and may chop around and flip-flop and more volatile markets are good but not incredibly highly volatile and chaotic where it doesn't happen quite that often but it is very scary as well because the market is moving so strong so what I want to do is I want to have first an idea of what is in fact too slow and what is in fact uh, too fast to trade. Now if you look down here you probably know that I use this ATR, the Average True Range Indicator Tool as a predictor on what the market is doing. So what I want to do is I want to first realize slow would be about four ticks on a five minute chart and too volatile and too chaotic would be roughly about five points. So if you just place a line on these extremes on the ATR with a setting of 4, I like to use a setting of 4, I know exactly where I stand. The other thing you're going to notice is as soon as the market opens that the volatility increases. Now this is an electronic market, there's no longer a day session or pit session as it's called compared to an overnight. It's almost all electronically and it's considered the Globex market. But there is a difference because as soon as that bell rings here at 930 you can see how everything increases in volatility and how everything increases in the trading transactions and so there is a difference still where you can consider moving forward the US Open, the bell rings, you probably see it on TV uh, with the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq where everyone begins to trade and you have to think about what happens as soon as this quote unquote opening session begins. It's almost as if everyone piles on, where everyone begins to position themselves for the day. And systems, uh, investors, swing traders, day traders, they're basically positioning themselves for a long or short position, depending on their analysis in the market. Now, for us, and for me as a day trader, I look at this as a good opportunity to see what we can do with the first few hours of the day because as you move forward in time, as the day continues, one hour would be 10.30, second hour would be 11.30, third hour would be 12.30. What you see here on the ATR is not a continuation of the volatility and these candles being larger and larger, what you see instead, especially today on a Friday, where usually Friday mornings are better than the afternoon, the market will begin to tailor off and get slower and slower. Now this is normal, so this is not something that you could say, you know, is uh, something you, you won't be able to investigate. This is actually something that if you look back every single day in every single market, the price action begins very strong 
as soon as it opens because everyone piles on, they position themselves, and then they're holding. And this holding pattern doesn't necessarily constitute a continuation of the market moving in the same direction. Instead, it constitutes the holding pattern where no one is buying or selling additionally and the market gets slower and slower. So to give you an example of that, if I go back here in history and you take a look at as soon as the market opens here at 9.30, it's the same example. It shouldn't change. The bell rings. It's considered the day session or the pit session of the United States. Remember, for me living in Florida, Eastern Standard Time, it's 9.30 for me. If you live in Central Standard Time, it would be 8.30. If you live in Colorado, Mountain Time, 7.30, California, Pacific, 6.30, and so on, or International. I have a lot of Australian clients, and for them it would be 23.30, depending on the Daylight Savings Time, which is 11.30 at night. It's late for them. So moving forward, when the U.S. session opens in your time zone, this, what you're seeing, is normal, and then... It's just a continuation of the market now dying off. And dying off sometimes, unless there's a reason to buy more, unless there's a reason, news, maybe something occurs internationally where the buying or the selling will continue and the volatility stays the same or increases. But for the most part, what you're seeing here 90% of the time, this is normal. And the same thing with here, 9.30. I'm just, just going back last couple of days, not really picking and choosing any specific days to show you this. And I want you to do your own testing as well. Here you have the day session beginning, and then what happens? Everyone buys and sells volatility. So this average true range does not indicate direction. I just want to make it clear. And if you have any questions as well, please don't hesitate to uh, place them in the chat box there. Um, I'm um, looking at a lot of people in the room, and if you do have questions, uh, these webinars are very interactive, so don't hesitate to ask me a question. And what you have here is the market popping because everyone buys or positions themselves, and then these candles get smaller and smaller and smaller, and that's why you see the ATR getting smaller and smaller as well. All right, anyone have any questions for me on what you're seeing? So what you're seeing here is absolutely normal, right? I have here the Atlas line up just to show you, I'll show you some of the of the orders here, and those of you who have the Atlas line, you guys have this exact same chart as I do, 9:30. Again, market opens, and then what we have is a big increase in volatility, and then the market gets slower and slower, and the candles get slower and slower. Okay. Now, when I look at this, I want to say here is too slow to trade. When the market is above one point, it's tradable. So the same thing, if I look at this overnight, or after hours, what we consider, what I would consider after hours, you can see how slow the market is. And the equivalent is all of this back and forth, this chop, this flip flop. Again, we're not looking at anything miraculous. This is actually normal. And so I want you to at least understand as a trader, it's not the more you trade, it's the quality of the signals and the quality of the trades that you're taking. So if I'm going to try to risk a trade long or short under these conditions, I know that I'm already at a disadvantage, being that the market is slower than normal. Okay, so just be careful with that. Again, you see here when the ATR is below one point, how slow, just to look at here the equivalent of what you're seeing, it's this chop, these dojis. You guys understand dojis, candlestick interpretation? Not really something that I teach. Uh, but at least this doji that looks like a cross open and close at the same price on a uh, candle. Uh, this means indecisiveness. You don't really know if the market wants to move up or wants to move down. So this is a big problem. You can't trade under these conditions successfully. You can get lucky and you're not going to make a lot of money doing this. And the same thing if you look at uh, today, for example, or yesterday. 
you have a lot of activity and then finally it tailors off underneath one point so yesterday you can trade the entire day as long as it's above one point here on the ATR and let me take a look here at another example for today okay so here we have the start of the day like so and whether there's a an Atlas line trade coming up here in a few minutes long or short whether it happens um, the ATR is tradable so that's good but as you go forward in time just keep an eye especially today on a Friday if the market falls below one point stop trading so this means that the first two and a half hours 2.5 hours of the trading day is the best and that's the day session I would consider or the pit session is it's also known now with the Atlas line is just one of the methods and tools that I offer and I use and I look at every day you're looking at trading different markets so one of the questions here is um, you know can the Atlas line trade other markets like currencies uh, the currency market it can so the Atlas line is not optimizable there's no value that you set for optimization which is good and it doesn't always uh, give you a signal unless the market is uh, strong enough which is at least one point there's actually a I'll show you here a um, a filter here that I have it set to one point and you can actually set it to whatever you want uh, but you can turn on or off this filter so when I look at the e-mini specifically it's four ticks or one point and I would say on a five minute chart it's equivalent across all markets so if you want to look at a different market uh, I think Okori um, you can but if you're looking at Forex you have to be careful with the spread you may have to use a 15 minute chart as opposed to a five minute chart because the slower you work with a forex chart the spread really eats in or cuts into what you're trying to make because if you give back um, in spread then every trade is really uh, difficult to get ahead so you have to hold on to a larger profit target with forex now if you're trading futures currencies instead like the 6e or the 6a which I'll definitely show you here let me bring it up okay so here's a, a euro a one minute chart with a forex market on a one minute chart obviously if you're just going for a couple of takes it's going to be difficult but if you're using a five or fifteen minute chart the rules are exactly the same so this is a currency this is the ATR setting a four and I also provide instruction and a live training with with the Atlas line so this is uh, something quick that I'm showing you but with um, the purchases I need to give you some type of walkthrough and instruction it's about an hour and a half of instruction on how to use this properly so if you look at adding the atlas line here to the currency we'll go to yesterday as long as you have at least four ticks then it's tradable if the market is less than four ticks I think it's a lot slower so whatever market you're looking at just make sure that it's active enough and tradable okay and here is the day before that October 19th and then this is 15 minute and this is the day before that now I prefer a five minute chart so if I look at a five minute chart the rules are, are the same and that's on a five minute chart shorts and longs but as long as you have at least four ticks it's tradable so I want you to first know when it's tradable before thinking um, let me just jump in now the first two and a half hours of the day here whether it's the e-mini whether it's the euro whether it's soybeans or coffee which are great markets to trade if there's an initial direction long or short as the day begins I want to focus on that and I want to say to myself you know everyone is pushing the market higher or lower so a good thing about the first few hours of the day there's usually an initial breakout or initial push that directs everyone into an opportunity 
but there's a problem with breakouts so if you for example look at a breakout and say as soon as the market breaks out of somewhere I'm gonna jump in long or jump in short obviously psychologically it makes sense but there's a, a problem with that because even if the market breaks down or breaks up for you and for me and for everyone who's jumping in on this bandwagon for it to move higher or for it to move lower is the only reason to take a profit and sometimes breakouts don't follow through so I have a different take on how to approach breakouts and how to actually jump into the market I first want to realize that there's a direction that happens so the direction being long or short and then after I realize that there's a direction I want to look at where the market has traded in order to go in the same direction long or short but testing where those highs or lows have been because the greatest example that I've seen recently on that here was actually I believe it was uh, yesterday okay so if you see here where the market is going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower this to me indicates that there's a trend obviously but where do you know or how do you know to enter at the beginning of this move or to enter here at this double bar short actually I just heard the signal for the Atlas line so this here is going to be a signal here coming up shortly right here so this may be a long trade so I'll just keep an eye on that in the next few minutes so what I wanted to show you is that if you don't know where to enter long or short and you're holding on and finally the moving averages kick in or MACD tells you to go short and you go short you may be entering short at the worst time where the move is over so instead of me thinking let me go short here after everything tells me go short the move is possibly over so the earlier that you get in to a trade the sooner you get into a trade the better and you never want to enter after it's made a big move or a big pop or a big breakout you always want to enter into a trade sooner or closer or after it retraces testing where it has already been so as an example the market traded to here if you entered short at this low or at this close didn't really do much kind of stayed stagnant so instead look for the market after it makes a move or a trend to give you still in the same direction short but as it's coming down to test where it's been you're positioned much better because markets like to test where they've been it's just common price action theory how the market doesn't like to be in uncharted territory uncharted waters it really prefers to stay in an area where it's comfortable so if I know that the market made this low I rather go short into a direction where it's already been so the price or the candles are below the atlas line which means I'm gonna focus on short trades only if the patterns and the setups appear or if they make sense so one of the one of the uh, patterns is the pullback trade and that's why you see these P's indicating the markets pulling back and to continue to go short the markets pulling back and to continue to go short the same thing here with a long trade after this long trade instead of going long at the highs or at the tips wait for the market to come back a little bit and to then to continue and test where it has already been so that's why you see these P's here in the software it's telling you the market is pulling back it's time to go long if this market has already traded to here it would make sense that it wants to at least attempt to test it it wants to try to get up there so most of the targets that I have on the pullback and strength trades are one point targets that's my recommendation unless the ATR is much higher or unless the ATR is really slow there's no point in putting in a trade you don't take any trade when the ATR is less than a point for, but for the most part when the market takes off or starts moving in one direction 
I think really the worst thing that you can do is just jump in and believe it's going to continue and follow through. So let's take care. Let me take a look at some uh, um, some questions here. Um, Okori, it works on currencies. Um, I explain on the currency market if you can get some time. Okay, I'll show you some more currencies, Okori, no problem. Sometimes the E-mini Oliver is definitely uh, slower than normal, and that's why in any market, not just the E-mini, if it's too slow or too quiet, or it's not volatile enough, look at that um, ATR, the average true range, which helps me understand what's happening. If it's too slow, I already understand it's too slow. On average, it depends, Rick. Definitely the double bar long and double bar short here. Let me show you. You always have uh, trade double closes every day. So that's at least one trade a day. If there's a bounce trade, these are additional trades. You have pullback and strength trade. So there's a total of one, two, three, four types of trades this one being the best followed by the pull I'm sorry the trade double closes being the best followed by the pullback and you can turn them on or off if you don't want to see the signals because I teach you how these patterns and signals actually display and why they display and I just heard the doorbell so let me take a look here okay so long so here is on the e-mini 2172 oh, sorry 212750 long so if you're going to go long, there's a few things, especially here, still within the first two and a half hours of the day, making sure that this is not overbought, oversold, looking for the market to come down, retrace a little bit, and test where these highs have been. Any trade or any opportunity above the Atlas line, like this, indicates focusing on long trades and vice versa. If it happens to cross, it's going to give you only short trades below where the Atlas line but you have to wait until it happens. So I always look for long and short trades, not at the tops or at the highs or at the or at the extremes, let's say, because more often than not, you're going to notice that it doesn't continue. It doesn't follow through. So you see this large red candle. I think most of us would agree that this is looking at it like so. Typically, we say, great looks like it's going to continue and and continue and continue but this large red candle larger than all the others here it almost always indicates uh, stopping stalling uh, taking a break so when I look at a large big candle it doesn't immediately tell me go short I'm concerned about it being the last hurrah as you call it as the market now maybe begins to stall out. Here's another example to show you. When you see a large red candle like this, don't consider it a, a move or an opportunity to continue. Be concerned because if you didn't enter here, you didn't enter here, you didn't enter here, then you have this big large red candle. It's almost the last breath before the market stops. At some point profit is always going to be taken either on the upside or downside in all markets. So part of price action as a trader, it's not just following indicators. It's is this candle going to produce a continuation? Probably not. And you see how it reversed. And so the same thing where you see, for example, this large green candle much larger than all the others. Don't consider that an opportunity to go long. Consider it an opportunity to go long if it's coming and testing back up because you go long here and it's flat. So don't consider it a, an opportunity. Any questions for me? Um, let's take a, later, take a look here. How many Alice Line trades you get each day? So Rick, it depends on if it's a trending day, you have a lot of pullback and um, strength trades. If you have a day that's flip-flopping, you see like this day here, it gives you a short, gives you a long, gives you another short, gives you more shorts for the pullback, gives you a long strength trade. I mean, there's a lot of trades here, and I definitely don't recommend you take every single trade. Overbought, oversold is part of the criteria for filtering out trades, making sure that we're not entering after it's made a big move. 
as well. And all that is taught as well during the live training. So there's a lot of trades that exist, especially in a five minute chart. But remember, it's not really the quantity, it's the quality of the trades as well. ATO long, let me add the ATO, um, Oliver. ATO at the open. So the at the open method is a method that I started showing and teaching traders um, I would say probably eight, nine years ago. And this method, this at the open method, is a method of looking at how the day begins. How the day begins to trade. So for example, let me just remove the Atlas line as an example and just focus on the ATO here. So this ATO software that I have, it's still available through Day Trade to Win. I offer it now in the mentorship program. Some of you who have been following me for years now probably have the ATO because I offered it separately. So it's telling me 2127, Oliver, so you should have the same exact trade as I have. So if you're long 2127, the goal is two points. The stop is going to be larger than the current conditions. And if at the end of four candles, which happens to be one, two, three, four, if the two points have not been made, so 21, 27 is going to be, let's take a look here, if I can look this up here, right there. So if it doesn't make 21.29 within the next four candles, that's when you get out of the trade. You say, you know what? I tried to go long. I've given this more than enough time. I'm out of the trade. So part of trade management, part of what I teach, it's not just one stop. So that's no. And it's not just one price value either. You have to look at managing the trade with multiple methods to um, I would say adjust your strategy as we continue forward. So for example after four candles a time-based stop you're out of the trade. Maybe it's a winner, maybe it's a break-even, maybe it's a small winner, maybe it's a small loss. But in reality the longer you hold on to a trade you're just hoping it's gonna happen. It's gonna eventually go in my favor. I never look at it like that. The other thing you can do is if this market begins to get slower and slower. Remember in the beginning I mentioned to you how as soon as the market opens it's like everybody piles on and then it's a holding pattern and the candles get smaller and smaller. Completely normal and expected. What that means is that if I have a two point target, right, so this is what this looks like at the moment, two points, right, right here, 2.16. And the next candle, when it closes, it updates the ATR, and it says, you know, the market's getting a little bit tighter channeling. It's getting smaller. What is going to happen is going to be adjusting, adjusting this to be seven ticks, and then maybe six ticks if that continues lower, or maybe five ticks, four ticks. If that's the case, remember, expectations are really important. What do I expect the market to do? And then let's prove that those expectations are correct. If the ATR gets smaller and smaller, it's meaning that the candles are also getting tighter and tighter. They're not as large as the ones prior. I will adjust this target, trade management, right? Adjust this target to a smaller target equal to the ATR to the slower side. Sometimes it increases. So let's say that this next candle is very large and it goes from two points, which is eight ticks, to nine ticks, which is two and a quarter. I am not going to increase this target. This will stay the same because this ATR is just showing you how large the candle is, not direction. So if this ATR increases, keep the target and the stop the same. If the ATR begins to get slower and slower as if the market itself is showing you that it's contracting drop your target equal to the ATR so it could be instead of eight ticks it could be seven ticks six ticks five ticks 
I want to get out of the trade with some profit. I'm not going to hold out because I want to be proven right. I want to be able to succeed in some way with this long or short trade, whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, Oliver, you're good with that? 2127 is correct. Uh, do I consider the slope Bernard of the ATR? Yes, I do. If the Bernard, if this, if the slope is very steep, it's no good. It can't be a steep slope um, right from the get-go. The Atlas line does not work when the slope is almost vertical. I would say, I, actually, I was just talking with someone yesterday, one of my mentorship students, and he mentioned that to me as well. Um, he said, you know, 45 degrees is his maximum when, uh, so 45 degrees would look like this, right? So if the slope is more than 45 degrees, either up or down, it would tell you that the Atlas line trade is going to be much harder to achieve, okay? It has nothing to do with GAN. I don't look at Fibonacci's or GAN or um, Bollinger Bands, for example, Oliver, or... Um, what else are there? Candle channels. I don't look at any of that stuff or candlestick interpretation. I really want to make this as simple as possible. You know, when you when you bring on all these indicators, especially all of these indicators that exist, it makes a big mess and your chart looks like a nice, colorful fruit salad. Believe me, I want to make this as clear cut and understand what I'm seeing. If I add three or four more indicators, it's going to be everything conflicting or confusing or covering what, up what I'm trying to understand. So I really like to look at just two things. Believe it or not, this is how I prefer the market to be. The ATR, what is the ATR doing? And this other tool which a lot of traders don't use, the bar timer. A lot of what I teach uses the close of a candle to do something. So the candle closes, I say, okay, it triggers long, it triggers short, it triggers even me to get out of a trade, right? The time base stop. So don't be surprised when a candle actually closes or opens, have that bar timer ready in order to say, okay, I know that the market is about to uh, provide a new candle. I've given this more than 20 minutes, I'm out of the trade, win, lose, or draw, okay? All right, um, let me see questions here. Okay, Okori, any other questions, Okori, for me? Oliver, Rick has a question here. Let me just forward that to everyone. Um, each day, okay, Rick. I think I answered that already. On a trending day, you have more strength and pullback trades. On a trending day. But you know how long or how many days are trending days? 15 to 20% out of the year are trending days. So in reality, there's not a lot of days that trend. If you, if you do have a trending day, pullback, strength trades, they're all good because it's all going in the same direction. 85% of the time, you're going to look at, or 80 to 85% of the time, let's say, you're going to look at the market flip-flopping back and forth and back and forth. So when I think about the opportunities that exist, Overwhelmingly, it's this, not the home run that everyone looks for and searches for. So I look for days, and I actually have an easier time trading days that are moving up and down and up and down as opposed to the trending days. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. If I look back here at the days that, that exist, right? So you have here on the ATO a trend to the upside, it just keeps on going. But on a typical day here, you see the market goes up and down and up and down. If I'm able to go short, then long, then short again, and then maybe take some pullback and strength trades as it continues, that to me is a better opportunity because it's expected 80 to 85% of the time, this, what you're seeing. Here's another day the day before that. You see how it's chopping around? Here's another day as well, chopping around. It goes up, then goes down, goes up, goes down. So I don't want to just hope for the, I would say, the um, trending day to fulfill what I need. I want to instead say this day 
see this day here? We took, the, we took a look at now at five or six days that we're chopping up and down. Here's the first day where it's a true trend, where it starts at 9.30 and continues pretty much until the end of the day. So out of all the days that we've seen, it's only one. You're not going to be able to make this day in and day out waiting for this one trending day if you have overwhelmingly the market from 9.30 to 12 and then the market turns around. So trending days are not that common, all right? I know everyone wants them. Great. Do you like the X5 method, Oliver? It's a very simple method. I offer it as a bonus with the trade scalper. I offer it as a bonus with the power price action method. And I offer it in the mentorship program. And uh, this X5 method is manipulation. That's what it is. No, it's a great question, Bernard. I would have to say no. I do not uh, assume that the direction of the slope of the Atlas line, that it's the, um, what, so let me add here the Atlas line, just to give you an example. I'm going to show you something else, which I think is more important, Bernard. I'll add it back here. OK, so take a look here at this at this chart, right? Just pick the chart here, October 6th. So you have a short trade, market goes down a little bit more, and you say, because the slope is down, can I assume that the market's going to go uh, low, right? Or the market's going to go in the same direction. It's actually the opposite, Bernard. I much rather see when the market crosses or goes against the slope, I think to me, it's a stronger indication of a reversal or a stronger indication that we're going against the grain of what the market was already doing. So for me, when I see the slope, sure, sometimes the, the market will continue in the same direction. And so what? I have, str I have pullback strength trades all to tell me to go short. But when it crosses against that, to me, it's better. It's a stronger move, Bernard. So another example here of the outline, you see, this is a trending day. All these S's and P's and double bar long. And this is a bounce trade right here. here. I'll show it to you. Which I actually have most of the time this turned off, the bounce trades. Let's see the bounce long right there, 2145.50. It's based off of this candle here. Um, I can take advantage of a trending day with pullback and strength trades all day long. But when it crosses, do you see when it crosses the Atlas line, how strong that against the grain or against the underlying uh, price value? That to me is a strong, it's a good, healthy move. It's healthy for the market to do that, uh, Bernard. So just to give you an example of that, even though the angle is up, you can still take advantage of all long trades as long as they exist. But when it crosses, it's usually a good, strong move. Same thing. Here is a trending day down. You have double bar short, bounce short. Here's a nice bounce short here. Um, strength trades, pullback trades. So it's a trending day. You can assume everything's going to be lower. But if it happens to cross against that, to me, it's good. It's really good. All right, Bernard? Let me clean this up here a little bit. Turn the bounce trades off. OK. All right, James, any question? Clark, Eric, Fred, Giuseppe, uh, Corey, Maggie, Nick. All right, so let's take a look at what the market is currently doing here and see where or what is existing, right, for today. Uh, I think it was 2127 for MC Oliver, what you wrote here. I'll, I'll, let me see here. 2127, I believe, was the long, and 2129 is the target and the ATR still if you take a look at understanding managing the ATR is still at two points so as far as dropping down the target not yet it's still indicating two points is available if it happens to go below two points it'll be seven ticks or one and three quarters of a point You know, Rick, uh, I'm looking to branch out because I had a lot of phone calls from different
companies, different charting applications. I offer a lot of support, meaning I install this. I have a small tech team that installs the software. I offer it for NinjaTrader, TradeStation, um, eSignal as well. Uh, but there's a lot of companies that are, for example, Thinkorswim is something that I have a meeting with them looking to offer uh, the Atlas line because I have a lot of requests for Thinkorswim, to, especially if you don't use a, a, a PC, you use a Mac. So I'm uh, looking to branch out based on the input that I'm getting. The Currently it's the NinjaTrader, and if you need NinjaTrader, I will be happy to provide NinjaTrader for you with live data and that way it helps with you first not having to get a broker opening up an account you practicing you getting the software and everything working the way it's supposed to so I do assist with that at no charge so currently I recommend NinjaTrader and so there will be There will be some uh, newer options moving forward. TradeStation as well. Okay. All right. Now, time-based stop. Remember, the market is getting slower, as you can see, but still two points. One, two, three, four. Remember, I said that managing the trade means not holding on to a position longer than expected. Well, at this point, if this double bar long. 21, 27, 50 was your entry. One, two, three, four. This is at this point my recommendation based on what I teach is to exit the trade. It didn't make the full two point target based on the ATR, but it still made six or seven ticks. I'm sorry, um, three ticks from here to here. So you're out of the trade. You should not be holding on to this much more than what you're seeing. Okay, so if you're in, you're out. Okay? I'm not looking at a chart that's already plotted and saying, in this case, go for one more. It's not like that. It's These are the rules. They're set in stone. I try to be objective. This is what it is. The same thing, um, Oliver, you took four ticks. Okay? The same thing if you took 2127 for the ATO. Here, I'll add the ATO to the chart at the open method. 2127 1 2 3 this is where you get out of the trade this candle or this candle that's it you're done all right i added that line uh, right there oliver so it's not the software i just i looked at the atr and i saw it was two points so i put the um I put this line here just so I could understand and to show everyone if 2127 was the entry, the ATR was at two points and so I wanted to, to show everyone what the target would be so you have an expectation of where the market needs to go and for you to get out as well, not just hoping that it's going to get there. So time-based stop, catastrophic stop, I use prove-it stops, I use pivotal stops, whatever happens first the Atlas line trade at you're out of it by this time so please if you're still long I want you to exit alright one two three four now moving forward into into the future today Friday let's say that the market continues higher and higher it could be right market could retrace down a little bit and then continue this is an opportunity the opportunity is to say here is where the market has already traded to today's high let's say day session high if the market comes down and begins to test those highs as a price action trader realize the opportunity but it's not just jumping in anywhere look at specific patterns like pullback and strength trades the Alice line will provide them to you based on a pattern based on a filter of higher entries compared to uh, previous entries all those things take into consideration All right, good, Oliver. And what did you use, Oliver, to make the $150 that, you're, that you traded today? And I would not trade anymore. If you traded twice on a Friday and you're up, 
I would recommend that you stop. You know I trade less. I'm not big on 100 trades a day. Okay, I got you. X5 and, and the ATO. And the ATO was almost the same as the Atlas line as well, Oliver, right? The ATO and the Atlas line were very close. Trade scalper? Yeah, you want to take a look, Pete? Let me um Yes. There are there is an out there's a um a blueprint setting up here to go long. I agree. Okay. These are all methods that I teach. Oliver has some of the courses, the power price action, the X5, the ATO, so he knows and he's calling out these trades. So let me change direction here. You want to see Pete the trade scalper. One minute chart. I'm going to remove the ATO and I'll add the trade scalper software. Um, you don't have to do anything here. This is a, a demo version of it um, and it's a little bit more involved the uh, the software that I actually offer so this is just a demo version of it it doesn't outline exactly how this is done but it does give the signals so here is on the trade scalper one minute chart is what is used the signals so for the trade scalper a one minute chart is much different it's not one point that's the minimum it's two ticks so the minimum is two ticks here because I don't want to trade for a tick normal is three ticks so what that means is that expect a two tick profit above two ticks expect a three tick target or profit when it's above 0.75 or three ticks depending on the market that you're looking at so this is also again relative to the current conditions the slower the market the less profit the slower the market where it's untradeable is here it's one tick you don't want to trade for a tick guys it's a lot of chop okay so the signals for the um, for the uh, trade scalper just now double wick long which is 2128 ATR is above 0.75 it's a three tick target so a three tick target would look like this and here is your target now I want you to think about what I mentioned earlier in this webinar I much rather enter testing where the market has already been and take it up so the entry here at the close of this red candle is 2128 testing where the market has already been that to me is much stronger as a, a move than let's say the entry is here at the close of this candle and then hoping it's going to continue higher you know that is you're really going into the unknown that's a problem so I never want to do that so that's what I recommend taking a trade after there's some evidence okay so the trade scalper offers a lot of signals you know I'm not gonna say take every signal you definitely have to look at if the market's slow so you see here when the market's a little bit slower uh, even though some of these trades are good I avoid them I don't want to be stuck in a slower environment okay and so these this here early morning at least two ticks So there's a lot of signals here on the trade scalper. I wouldn't take any of these trades, by the way. See all this? Look at the equivalent on the ATR. Now the trade scalper, the the method, or I should say the software, has built in. Let me show you the the one that I actually that you that you actually will receive. It has here a filter. So this is the actual trade scalper version that everyone receives after purchasing it, not the demo version it has a sound file you can turn off or or turn on the specific entry signals there's two of them double wick and the regular you have the calculations that are all plotted out for you 
Um, but this filter was something that I added recently where you can say if the market is too slow I want to say less than two ticks no trades so this definitely here tells me good to go um, unless it's too slow so you can actually set this whatever you want okay so this is the actual uh, trade scalper version that you receive after purchase the one that I'm showing you right now is just a demo version which is just signals it doesn't outline why and how this is happening um, I don't know Oliver is there any testimonials out there that you wanna give everyone John is asking here I'll let you forward here the, the questions that John is is asking you here if you wanna answer Oliver you can answer as honestly as you'd like. Uh, Corey, um, I'm just forwarding here the questions that that they guys are uh, communicating with, with one another. Where would you stop be on that one? Uh, Corey, I don't know. I didn't see your question um, on which one. I'll, uh, Corey, something here that I showed you? Let me know, Corey, if there's the specific time. I'm just forwarding here some some questions here to everyone. Double wick on the trade scalper. Okay, so great question. How do you manage the trade on the trade scalper, right, Corey? Okay, so when I look at the double wick here entry, so this is occurring, and you can the name of the of the signal is double wick because it has two two consecutive wicks going higher. It's really the outline of it. In the course is a hundred page course. It includes the X5 bonus, which Oliver can attest to is a great method on manipulation. It's a bonus that I include with the trade scalper. So the idea here, before you enter long or short, uh, Corey, is to say, where's the ATR? What are my expectations? So this happens to be above three ticks. So right away, three tick target and a six tick stop. So a three tick target and a six tick stop. So my stop is going to be from this entry here now you could say that's really big and I agree that is a, a large stop but if the market needs to breathe a little bit before going up in my favor I can't have a stop that is smaller than the current conditions this ATR tells me it could easily move up or down three ticks so the problem is most traders have too tight of a stop I need to have a stop that's large enough to keep me in the trade at the same time be relative to the current condition so if it's above three ticks which it is six tick stop three tick target if the ATR is above two but less than three there's no reason for me to have such a large stop it's instead it's a two tick target and a four tick stop okay so two ticks if it's between two and three ticks two tick four tick three tick six tick so the stop is one and a half points right about here the target is here and there's also a time element as well um, Corey if this trade does not produce the target within a lot of time you're out so there's also again a time element with this You know, I have a meeting with actually Thinkorswim uh, shortly. I will be discussing, you know, some options. And John, the best thing I can tell you right now is just get back to me or email me, and I will let you know the time frame for Thinkorswim. This is being recorded, Carlos. I will put the recording on the the blog, the Trade Twin blog. I can't say, John, that's going to be tomorrow or the next day. Uh, it'll take a couple of weeks to get everything in order, but at least the the ball is rolling for that alright everyone I'm gonna send everyone um, a follow-up email with the link to watch this recording please email me if you have any questions uh, we have a nice class here that just began in October for a mentorship 
Um, I don't have a date yet for the next class, but if you're interested, just check the website. I'll have a new date uh, set up for the next mentorship class, which includes all of this. It includes the Atlas line, the power price action, uh, the roadmap, the trade scalper. So the mentorship is all in one inclusive price. Instead of getting a few of these methods separately, you get a discount in the mentorship class in the group. Um, let's see here. Any other questions, guys, before I close out the room? There is a November class uh, coming up. I haven't even checked on the dates yet because I just started uh, the October 19th class, John. So if you want, email me or I will be um, updating the blog and the Day Trade Twin website with the new dates as well. You got it, Nick. You're welcome. Nice to hear you, Oliver, as well. Email me if you have any questions, though, okay? Have you two have a good weekend. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Rick. Bye-bye now.